So as some of you know, um, I came down to Naples to do some business and I was supposed to leave, uh, but there's some hurricane that's making its way down here. The rain has started um, and uh, we're just uh, waiting it out. It's getting a little windy. And so I have nothing more to do except go to the comic book shop in the mall that I first discovered last winter and see whether or not they have made any changes and whether I might be able to find some comic books that I like. Stay tuned for the video. Anachronic. So we're making our way to the Coastland Mall. Um, you see here, there's a little bit of rain. Um, it's breezy, not so bad yet. We hear it's Tuesday morning, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, and when you might see this, and Thursday are gonna be the worst days. Uh, and we'll be riding it out. And we're just getting close to Fifth Avenue, one of the major roadways here in Naples. Uh, we're gonna pass at the right-hand side here now. You'll see the uh, uh, town hall or the city hall. Um, some great restaurants here. The left is a park where they have concerts and um, good seafood place here to the right. And uh, we're gonna just follow 8th Street North for a while, then move over to US 41 and what they call Tamiani. Uh, and that means that it goes from Tampa to Miami. All right, we'll pick it back up when we get to the mall. So we are approaching the Coastland Mall. Uh, I think it's up at the next light. And we'll be turning into the parking lot. There's in the Naples Zoo. Um, and we get into that parking lot. Um, we'll be parking a car, going in, and checking over the Prime... I forget the name of it. Was it the Prime uh, Collectors or Prime Comic Book stop? Here's the Coastland Mall right here. And so let's go in. Whatever it is, I'll find it. So one thing I didn't realize is that a lot of these stores are closed. <laughs> maybe they're closed because they're not going to be open at all. Or maybe they open a little bit later. It's a little bit before 11. So uh, we get to Prime, we'll see. So there's Prime, but it is closed. Uh, let's see if it's going to open up in a little while. I can hang out. Okay, it's open. Let's go in. I don't know if that's that guy Sean I met last year. Let's see. So the store has gotten some new stuff in. And certainly has developed. We got a lot of, looks like, um, graded comics, even some under. You'll be okay. Just out of water. Looking for someone. Ivy's mind control spores, laced with kryptonite. So you are as clever as they say. He was a little resistant last night, so I thought I'd give him an extended dose. What are you up to? Well, let's look for just asleep first. This is my usual scenario. Okay, I'll show you what we get later on. So I'm back at the condo, and I have to tell you, it's really started to rain pretty hard outside. And it's not even the hurricane yet, it's just kind of the outskirts of it. So here's hoping that we do okay. So I did go to Prime uh, Toys and Games and I spoke with Sean, who I spoke to last year. If you watched the video, if not, I'll make sure I put a link. That was part of my uh, Florida comic book crawl. Uh, and I did pick up some comics. Actually, what I found was a couple of boxes that he had that had golden age comic books some of them in not too great a shape others a little bit better but the interesting thing is i found some that were from england and one from australia slash new zealand and i got something to say about those uh at the end after i showed the uh, comic book so make sure you stick around okay so the first one i picked up was daredevil number 116 from 1954 there's a lot of mold and it's not even the greatest shape, but uh, I'm gonna 
put on my uh, Jerry the Jitterbug. Uh, I'm going to put on my Jerry the Jitterbug uh, hat and, and information, and I'm going to uh, do my best to see what I have if I can clean this up a little bit. All right, so Daredevil number 116 from 1954. The next one I have is Tarzan, volume one, number six, from 1950. I think it's a July or August issue of 1950. And it's a Dell book, all right? And this fellow, I forget the name of this guy. But when I was a kid, there were a couple of people that were putting out um, Daredevil movies. I did. There were a couple of people putting out Tarzan movies. I think it might be Ron Eli, but I'm not positive about that. If any of you guys know, you could mention in, in the uh, comments below who this actor is. But obviously the actor ends up on the uh, cover of this comic book. Next one I have is a DC one. I think it's the only DC one that I found. It's Gangbusters number 54. And Gangbusters number 54 is from 1956, I believe. This is not so bad of shape, 1956. It's a relative newbie <laughs> in this group. So um, uh, it's got just a number of different kind of crime stories and so forth in it. Now we go on to a number of comic books that I found that when I first picked them up, I said, oh, you know, let me take a look at this and I'm in the great shape, blah, 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 blah. And then I found out that they were from England. And if you take a look, they're smaller than their U.S. counterparts. All right, so the first one is Billy the Kid. Now, this Billy the Kid is, um, let's see, Billy the Kid number two, and it's from 1950, all right? It's got some problems, got like a rip on the back and so forth, but the cover looked pretty nice. Wasn't bad. Billy the Kid, famous guy, and they used him as a, a, a comic book character. The next one I have, and the next one I know is a big to do here in the United States. I think for my 1951 comic book birthday video last year, I believe I had one of these, but from the United States. This one is from England. So this one is um, La Lash, Lash LaRue Westerns, and it's number seven, and it's from August of 1950. Again, it's in the English version of the US comic book. So this is a 1950s comic book. Now, the next one I'm gonna show you is probably the most expensive of the group, and it's probably the one that's in the best shape of the group, all right? This, and again, you can see the size here, how much smaller it is. So this one is a Fawcett publication from England. It's Soldier Comics, all right? Let's see, get the glare out. So Soldier Comics, uh, let's see what I wrote down here. Soldier Comics is uh, number seven, and it's from 1953. All right, cool cover there with the soldiers fighting. 1953. Okay, we go back to the U.S. with this one. Um, Roy Rogers Comics. It's a Dell comic book. It's got somebody's name on it, Sharon A. So Sharon A. must have been a big Roy Rogers fan. Hey, I was. I used to watch his show. At least the reruns of this show on Saturday morning. All right, so this is Roy Rogers, and it's Roy Rogers number 36 um, from November of 1950. All right, I had to kind of look some of these up or open them up to look inside because they don't put that, especially Dell was that way, didn't put that stuff on the uh, cover. But uh, this is a nice one with uh, Roy Rogers and Trigger. His golden palomino is what they used to say. And you can see there he's very golden. <laughs> and I guess he's a palomino. Not a horse, guys. I don't know what that is. Okay. We go back to England for the next two. Um, next one is... Oh, now this is an interesting one. It's King Comics, Volume 1, Number 5. There we go. And this one was from 1954. And if you see over here, all right, it says, Volume 1, Number 5, Week Ending June 5th. Now, some of you are more articulate <laughs> comic book people know that comic books started out um, pre-superheroes, pre-Superman, Batman, um, Captain America, uh, basically reprinting the um, comics, you know, the comic strips that appeared in the newspapers. 
This one was a weekly comic book that came out in England that reprinted the comic strips. So when you look through them, it says, you know, there's a particular character. They go through the comic strip and they say, tune in, you know, for uh, next week for the uh, next um, thrilling adventures of the particular character. So it, this is full of comic strips. And the next one, I just kind of fell in love with the cover. I just loved it. All right. Again, from England, from February 1953, it's Masterman Comics. Pow! Boom! So Masterman Comics from 1953, February of 1953. Nice. Look at the red. It's got the yellow. Bashing on the guy. And I wonder what the totem pole is doing there. But I did take a quick look inside. Oh, also, these English comic books are black and white inside. No color, which is very interesting. Anyway, I did take a look inside, and apparently he's a kid who got some spell from some ancient something or other, and when he says something, he turns into uh, into this master man. Sound familiar? Sounds like some other comic book hero I think I've heard of before. <laughs> anyway, kind of a cool cover. And the last one I got, I, I mean, not because of the artwork, but just, it just hit me when I saw this. It's not in the greatest shape either, though the cover looks great. And that's kind of what I'm going for on this, is does the cover look good on some of these things? This is the comic book from Australia, New Zealand. All right. It's Crimson Comic. I'm sorry. It's Crimson Comet number 39. Look at that. Apparently, he's a detective, and somehow he wears a trench coat like other detectives, and he's got to put those wings underneath there. So the Crimson the crimson Comet is from, um, oh, that's right. I couldn't figure out where it was from. I couldn't figure out the date of this one. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more research on it. Uh, it is a Golden Age comic book, I think from the 1950s, but the Crimson Comet started back around the... Um, late 40s after the war i believe so this being number 39 is probably in the early 50s of some sort but i couldn't find it i didn't find anything on the comet in the comic book itself that gave me a date and when i did at least a little bit of research not a lot because i just got back a little wet <laughs> i wanted to go ahead and make uh, this video as soon as i could um it was um uh, just wasn't easy to find so a nice Hurricane Hall, but here's the key. Last year, I had a, um, a special that I did, which was mystery boxes for charity. And we raised money through the selling of mystery boxes and I, my own comics, and I doubled the amount that we got. And so we were able to give um, $1,200 to St. Jude's Hospital. So I'm going to do the same thing this year, and we'll be announcing it sometime next month. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to expand the number of boxes because it was a great demand. Instead of seven comic books, I'm going to have 10. And I'm going to guarantee that there's going to be at least three to five Golden Age, Silver Age, and or Bronze Age comic books in each of the packs of 10. I am also going to have at least one signed slab comic book. I'm going through my collection to see which one it might be. Everybody that buys one of the 10 or 12 or 15, whatever it is, mystery boxes, will get a chance to win that. And I'm also going to give people an opportunity to buy a chance uh, for an amount I haven't yet figured out. It's probably going to depend on the value of the particular uh, sled that I pick. So it's going to be kind of cool. And like last year, depending on the amount of money that I make, if I sell out all of the boxes, all the mystery boxes, I will then, in like kind, double the amount that I make on that and give it to the particular charity. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be St. Jude's this year. I think I'm going to look for a different one. I, I have one in mind, uh, but I want to do a little bit more of an investigation on it. So I'll probably announce it some point uh, next month, towards the end of the month. Uh, we'll give it a, uh, basically a month to uh, to sell and so forth. We'll put a sale date on it, a drop dead date, and um, stay tuned to hear more about it. One last thing. Normally, this Friday, there would be uh, the monthly comic book crowd show. My flight was supposed to go out tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, but all flights have been canceled because of the hurricane down here. So I'm kind of stuck. Uh, I'd probably be going out on Saturday, I think. 
and I don't have any more internet here because we're you see some boxes were moving from this condominium to another and so I transferred the account already but that condominium is being renovated so I'm a man without internet um, to upload this type of stuff I have to go over to somebody else's house and all of that so I can't do the uh, comic book crowd so we're gonna miss the comic book crowd but I might do something else, another live uh, show, maybe in a week or so. So uh, stay tuned for that. I have an idea about something just to be able to fill in that live show um, uh, uh, situation that we're going to be missing with the comic book crowd. But the comic book crowd will be back next month, last Friday of the month. And we have a great topic and we hope to still have a uh, guest uh, uh, involved with it. So that's it. That's my hurricane Hall and some announcements. Um, so cross your fingers that the hurricane isn't too bad down here in Naples. And hopefully, hopefully, I will see you soon. Be well, people.